Every year, ops people spend countless hours logging into virtual machines to install and configure software. Some perform the soul-crushing task of automating this process by developing a full pipeline for creating golden system images, all to save 20 seconds on first boot. We here at the Cloud Init Society of the Cloud think that there's a better way. At CISC, we believe that you can update your VM, add some users, mount a couple of disks, install software, and drop in a config file on first boot. How is this possible? With Cloud Init, 100% fair trade, responsibly sourced Cloud Init, you can perform the most common tasks required to set up a VM on first boot. Cloud Init is present on most, but not all modern clouds. Not suitable for installing longer than 30 seconds. Debugging is not obvious. If your system hangs on boot for more than four hours, please contact your senior engineer. Cloud Init. When f it, it just needs Nginx installed. On almost every cloud provider today, you can run a script on instant startup that allows you to do whatever setup tasks you need. Most cloud providers have transitioned to using Ubuntu's Cloud Init package for instant startup management. This package will do fundamentals like set up SSH keys, mount drives, expand root disks, and a bunch of other stuff you would expect from telling the cloud to make you a computer that appears out of thin air. What you may not know is that by passing it a specially formatted YAML file with specific headers, it will unleash the full power of Cloud Init. So what can you do with this? Let's start with setting up a typical application. First, we're going to add our header, then tell Duplete the system image. Then we'll add some packages our application needs. Next, drop a couple of config files so this all starts up correctly. And finally, we'll run a few commands to make sure everything's installed and set to auto start. And now, within about five seconds of this instance starting, it's fully functioning NAT gateway with traffic shaping. What else can you do? Kind of a lot. This is a comprehensive list of the things, but the big ones people use in addition to what I've shown here are to add users, mount and format disks, and set up the host name on the machine. So this is all well and good. But when should you not use this method for instance startup? If you need any of the following, you should probably pre-bake your system image. If your application setup takes longer than your startup budget. If you need a new instance online in about a minute and it takes 10 minutes to install the app, well, this won't work. If the setup of the instance involves a lot of downloading and it gets deployed a lot, it may just be cheaper to bake into the golden image that you don't get charged for every time. If the setup process is airport security levels of complicated or finicky, you might be better off doing this all offline and getting alerts when things break rather than getting an outage named after you. I mean, you also have other problems, but we'll ignore those for now. So this is all well and good, but like anything else you built, you probably built yourself a bunch of problems. So let's figure out how to debug this. First, the logs are in generally where your logs are kept. Var logs for most distros today, and for some unknown reason, C colon backslash logs on Windows. Editor Dan here. It should be noted that AWS does not use Cloud Init on Windows. They have their own version going for them. It should also be noted that GCP and Azure barely have it running on anything besides Ubuntu. So keep that in mind. All right, back to the program. Output from your script is in cloud-init-output.log, and general output from Cloud Init is in cloud-init.log. Yeah, no surprises here. Once you have some idea of what broke from looking over those files, you can go into the scripts folder in var lib cloud instances script to see what was actually run. You can directly run that script as root or rerun that part of the cloud init process with this single command, like this. This runs the startup script, but there are a bunch of other modules you can have rerun. Just check the official docs for what they're called. And finally, let me give you some guidance and best practices so you can more effectively not screw yourself over. Since while writing your startup scripts, they will fail spectacularly, you should add the following to your script so that the thing fails out immediately and you don't continue the script, causing chaos in your instance configuration to descend into the pits of computing hell. This tells Bash to exit from any failure. You can add an X to the mix and it will output each command before execution for even more visibility to what's going on. Next, try to be as item potent as possible. Basically, your code should be able to run multiple times and have the same result. For instance, if I run this code several times, I'm going to get multiple entries into the host file. Not great. Instead, I should make sure that I either don't do the thing if it's already there, or I should rebuild without the line I'm adding. This will also make long-running scripts faster by skipping all the work that has been done by subsequent debugging runs. Finally, before you get a fully working deployment, don't just terminate and try again for your next rev. Edit and rerun the script as many times as it takes so you can fix multiple errors per spin-up cycle rather than one. Most of the time, you can comment out the script that did run well and execute the remainder as root to see how it goes. Feel free to bail early and test it step by step. Spend more time fixing and less waiting. Hope you found that useful. As always, I'm Dan, dedicated cloud architect. If you have any ways to improve on what I've said here, please feel free to let me know in the comments. And if I, your humble servant, can do better, please let me know. Thank you, and goodbye, nerds.